for the few that have actually read any terms and conditions, what sneaky things have you found? I was stoned and downloaded a mobile game some years ago and decided to read the terms and conditions. It was like 20 pages and mostly had to do with privacy and microtransaction stuff. In the back half a paragraph was the lyrics to Titus Africa. I want to know what app this was. I know at some point Comcast was not responsible if it killed you. Haven't looked at it in years though. Used to work for them so you get to learn the terms pretty quickly. Comcast is not responsible if... During an interaction with one of our experienced customer service representatives, the customer's cranial region ruptures or in any way combusts due to any number of medical factors. In the hiring contract for the last company I worked for, there was a line buried on page like 20 to that said if you email a certain email address on your first day saying you saw the line, you'll get a bonus day of PTO for the year. I had a Victoria's Secret coupon that said Canadians are required to pass a math question or test in order to be eligible for the discount. I think I still have it at my desk, my job in part is writing terms and conditions, agreements, and disclosures for the bank I work at so I actually do read a lot of TNCs in homage to the amount of time my colleagues in the field put into writing 18 pages of crap no one but examiners read. The Canadian math requirement is the strangest I've ever seen. That's actually required of them by Canadian law, which does not allow any gaming or lotteries that are not officially sanctioned. It's just a technicality. So if you answer the question correctly, you haven't won a gamble, you've earned the reward. Gamer Station once made an immortal soul clause on April Fool's Day, to prove that no one actually reads the terms and conditions. It read by placing an order via this website on the first day of the fourth month of the year 2010 Anno Domini, you agree to grant us a non-transferable option to claim, for now and forevermore, your immortal soul. Double quote. The devils and the details. Thank you customer for actually reading our terms and conditions. Send us an email with the following content and we will send you a free box of chocolates. They did indeed send chocolate. Control plus F reading on every terms and conditions now, or other keywords. At a gun range one time I saw that if I yelled out I love dogs my time and anything I buy is half price, I immediately did so, startling my best friend. That was awesome. The contract to a job I had working in the desert warned about the frequency of alien attacks. I was disappointed to go a year and a half without any, though. If you make money on TikTok. The owners can rightfully take the money. They can also use your videos in their advertisements without your permission, even if the videos are private. Cody Co had to deal with this. Deviant Arts Tools is basically a contract allowing them to print, reproduce, and profit from your art, if they so choose, without needing your permission or consent. Usually this takes the form of ads or contests where they'll be used in public displays. If you post works that show a high level of technical skill, then you need to either sign it or use a big goal watermark. Things like this are pretty common on most art or picture websites. Not saying it's right just that similar things are common. After reading through all the comments here, I see no one has mentioned how useful this tip can be. If you're downloading some shady software, scroll through the entire tos and find any checkboxes, then uncheck them, usually for things like this. That's how various programs and malware will end up being downloaded without you understanding how, which is what will usually happen with people who are especially young or especially old. There will be something written in there like you agree that you would like to install Mega Super Saver Search Plus to your PC and set it as your default search engine with a pre-checked box next to it, leading to a lot of easily avoided problems. So yeah, scroll through and uncheck boxes when you're downloading something weird. You don't even need to read the terms, just be aware what could be tucked away inside them. Back in the day when people, legally, acquired new music by buying CDs, one of the bands I listened to would hide nice little messages to fans in the copyright legal fine print and the booklet that came with the CD. Sometimes there would be a small link to a hidden part of their website that had extra content. Pretty cool of them. I'm a lawyer. Whenever undergrads tell me they want to go to law school, I tell them to read the entire iTunes terms and conditions, without skipping a single sentence. If they can't get through it, they don't have the discipline and attention to detail for law school. Fairly good test tbh. 
A while ago, 2011, there was a scam work from home service widely advertised all over Facebook and other places, promising enormous paychecks and a free trial. It was an opt-out subscription service as you might expect. Curious as to how the scam worked, I looked at their TNCs. There was a clause in there requiring you to pay $10,000 in compensation to the company if you filed a charge back against their fees. Whilst that would never stand up in court, dealing with debt collectors who might conveniently offer to settle for a mere 3000 would be all sorts of heck. On Amazon, anytime they want they can't take away from me the books that I've bought on Kindle store. Sony can sue you for literally not updating your console software if you're connected to internet. As someone who had to get a privacy policy and read the thing, as far as I know I'm not allowed to use my own service. According to the legal agreement I got with myself and agreed to, in case I do know that I access the service against what's written in the privacy policy I should contact myself by email letting me know that so I can erase any private data I got on myself. If I refuse to erase the data I think I can sue myself. Send help. How do you handle GDPR if you're a brick and mortar store that only does sales in the US? You geoblock the rest of the world. Easy peasy. IDK if this is super surprising, but I read the entire lease for my first apartment and apparently, I couldn't get out of my lease even if I died. Might be so they have a claim against your estate for the remainder of the rent for the year. There was a story contest from a theme park where your story could be published, but any story submitted would automatically be owned by the company and could not be used by you or others, so they could. 1. Throw your story in the trash and you still wouldn't legally own it anymore and can't publish it somewhere else. 2. They own your story so they can make money out of it without paying you a dime. 3. They were not obligated to credit you as the writer other than mentioning it somewhere in the first publishing. After that it was fair game. 4. They were allowed to alter your story as they saw fit without consulting you. I wasn't the only one who noticed. It was soon pointed out on social media. There wasn't really a backlash, but I didn't submit a story. Wanted to sign my kid up for cheerleading. Sat there and read the terms and agreement. Said something along the lines of we are not responsible for any accidents that occur in the transportation of your child. My husband lost his brother in a school transportation accident and they initially tried to avoid the blame. So naturally that line gave us the heebie-jeebies and we just left. Turns out they were just a shady company all around. She now does cheer through her school. Pretty sure anyone who ever played the original Diablo also agreed sold their soul to the devil in the terms and conditions. Oh my god. Those religious 90s moms were right. Something that I wish I read was on Fabletics online store. Apparently if you make any purchase they automatically sign you up to their VIP program which is a $50 per month subscription for VIP clothes. I made one purchase on their site. Checked out like any other online store, and got my clothes a week later. 8 months go by and I notice a minus $50 taken out of my bank from Fabletics. I check my bank pretty often so I dk how I missed this, and it turned out to be a recurring payment for 8 months. I called their support line and explained to the guy that I never signed up for their subscription and I never even received any sign up confirmation emails or payment statements to know what was happening. He said I most likely signed up when I purchased my clothes 8 months ago because it's in their terms. It's like once you sign up they ghost you and take your money every month. It took a lot of frustration and refusal to hang up the phone until they finally said I can get a refund of my $400 plus that was just sitting in my VIP account. I was like clearly I was unaware of this because from the past 8 months I haven't made any more purchases on your stupid site. Give me my money back. They finally refunded it all back. Freaking scammers. Don't buy crap from Fabletics. I still should leave an online review about it because after looking up Fabletics scam it seems to happen to a lot of people. Amazon's or service terms contain a clause pertaining to a zombie apocalypse. No, really. Comma however, this restriction will not apply in the event of the occurrence. Certified by the United States Centers for Disease Control or Successor Body of a widespread viral infection transmitted via bites or contact with bodily fluids that causes human corpses to reanimate and seek to consume living human flesh, blood, brain or nerve tissue and is likely to result in the fall of organized civilization. It wasn't actually me, 
It was the manager I was interning with. He told me about how it was important to read everything, even the terms and conditions. When you go to an iPhone's license page, or something else, I don't remember, it says that they won't take any responsibility to any shock you received from the phone if it were 5mm away from you, unless you had something blocking it from your skin, like clothes, or a pocket protector. While buying a train ticket in Russia, if the train breaks down, don't think of this as a way to get compensation, consider it a part of the Russian experience. WhatsApp, when it went full Facebook 4 years after purchase, sent out an Android update. The update said it was just adding the ability to give group chats a subheading. What it was actually doing was giving Facebook permission to take information. This option was enabled by default of course it was, and you had only 3 months to notice this had happened before the option to opt out was disabled. I was late noticing this, but when I read the terms and conditions, the last line said something along the lines of, even if you opt out, Facebook and the Facebook family of companies will still take the data for training purposes. I undeleted my account. They probably had my info by that point but frick that crap. Installed signal. As soon as FB bought it I uninstalled. You just knew they were going to pull some crap like this. I've been using signal for years and have a lot of friends family that use it. A job schedule app my company uses requires you to log in using the company email. To set this up on your phone, you have to give your company the rights to erase the contents of your phone remotely, probably in case you become a threat to the company. No thanks. If you want to take Huawei to court you have to take them to court in China. What they don't tell you is that it's near impossible for a foreigner to win a court case in China. I don't know if they changed it but, when you chose the fragile option in a mail system like FedEx, that didn't meant they would take special care of it but that you admitted that it was fragile and therefore it could be broken without being their fault, leaving you unable to sue them for breaking your package or to ask any reimbursement. And of course, if you don't mark it as fragile and it breaks, it's still your fault for not letting them know that they should take extra care of it. What a joke. I remember a story years ago about this guy applying for a loan or credit card from his bank but asked to take the documents home and read over them and send them back a signed copy. He added clauses and the TNCs that the bank had to pay him and if they wanted out of the contract they had to pay him some huge exit fee. Signed the amended one and sent it back to them and they agreed to it without reading it. Not sure how true it is though. Ancestry DNA owns your DNA forever and can do what it likes with it. I foresee Jurassic Park coming, but with people. Edit. No doubt there are already people walking around. I'm imagining a scenario more like we clone famous infamous people for kicks and giggles. Kind of the like the Hall of Heads in Futurama. Lucky for me, that wasn't my DNA. It was for a lottery arranged by my city. You would pay money to get in and win various prizes. On the terms and conditions it said they don't really have to give you any prizes. I can't remember the app. It was many moons ago I saw this. But it was supposed to be geared toward aspiring photographers and giving them exposure. And you could rate other photos and do challenges. Essentially the two said that anything you post is now their property that they can use for whatever they want. Including making money off of it. Our Nida Franco CDS and cassettes had a disclaimer that said, Unauthorized reproduction, while sometimes necessary, is never as good as the real thing. Double quote. Not totally related but I heard on NPR recently that they can't really screw you over in any way by hiding some unfair clause in a long terms and conditions thing. It won't hold up in court, as it's unreasonable to expect people to read hundreds of pages of legal documents for downloading an app or something gym membership contract one of the reasons that will not allow waiving your resignation fee is in case of a nuclear reactor core melting you have been visited by the romantic doggo comment love is magic so you never fall in the friend zone if you are new to the channel you can subscribe i publish new videos every day until then check another video or don't either way have a great day you magnificent people